What if I told you the greatest athlete there ever was never once shot a basketball, never threw a football, and never hit a home run? He had it all. He had the money, the fame, a Dorito sponsorship. Then he lost it all in the blink of an eye. ESPN presents 30 for 30. Don't blink. Greg was the greatest daring contest competitor I've ever seen. Uh, my son and I, we had season tickets. I got them for his birthday one time. And one of his matches, we actually got a backstage pass. And before every match, he would pull pepper out of the cupboard and he would sniff it. And then he would keep his eyes open during the sneeze. It was incredible. I thought that was impassable. I mean, it was unreal. He's the only person in the world that I ever seen who could do that. God, he was good. In all my years commentating the IFC Championships, I've never seen anything like this. When Greg arrived, everybody knew they were just fighting for second place. I mean, staring contests worldwide, it was just no contest for anyone else. I mean, he was so good and so consistent, it was hard to picture anybody beating him. Uh, I remember when he won his 100th title, uh, that's when we really knew this was something different. He had a meeting with President Obama, because everybody knew Greg was the hottest name in the U.S. For the first time, we had stars like Justin Bieber, LeBron, heck, I even think Miley Cyrus came out to one of the staring contests. It was, it really made us all feel special. He was just different. I remember one day we were in the weight room and we were doing max, max reps for, for eyelid lifts. And then, I don't know, I got a cold feeling over me, the chills, I got goosebumps and I looked over and he was going and going and he he just kept going and it was that day that I knew something inside of him inside of him had changed he wanted to be the best in the world and there was no one that could stop him I never I've never seen anything like it Greg was one of the toughest athletes in the world he trained harder than any of them out there I mean he had a nightly routine where he would turn on the scalding hot water tape his eyes open and put his face directly at the shower. And she, one time I caught him doing it and he looked absolutely insane. And I mean, that was just Greg though. That's how he did his thing. Stories about Greg are just legendary. I mean, how could you not be a fan after hearing them? The time he drove from Cleveland to the Jersey Shore, 212 miles with his head out of the sunroof during mosquito migration season, and he didn't blink the entire ride, that's when I became a huge Greg fan. Greg invented this new training regimen called the dry ball technique, where you would put some fans in front of your face and keep your eyes wide open and fight through the pain that would be the drying of your eyeballs. He actually had his house renovated so he could practice it at home. It was the Property Brothers that did it from HGTV. He actually had us renovate his house back in 2014. I think he had us install 75 fans above his master bedroom. We just lay there and stare at them without blinking. Yeah. He's a legend. Total legend. It must have cost him a million dollars, but it gave him a significant advantage over his competitors. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, I scored a couple touchdowns, went over for over 200 yards, um, and I had a pretty good run. And I go to look at ESPN and see if I made Sports Center top 10. Not even there. This Greg Baskwell kid, whoever the hell he is, was one through ten. I mean, go figure. And the sports world still don't know who he is, but he was one through ten on top ten. <laughs> I was Greg Baskwell, but I'm not the same person that I used to be. When I was world champion, I would always give back to the fans, and I loved it. I loved every second of it. I would host autograph sessions in random cities throughout the country and throughout the world, and fans would drive from all over, thousands of miles, just to meet me. Uh, I could charge anywhere between $50 to $20,000 for a signed piece of paper. I've coached the best swimmers in the world, but in the world of athletics, 
I've never seen anything like this. This guy's amazing. When he gave me this autograph in 2013, it meant the world to me. How does he stare like that? After Greg won the Staring Contest World Championships, it was insane how many catfish started using pictures of Greg on fake profiles. I mean, can you blame them? What girl doesn't want to look deeply into those beautiful, beautiful eyes? I know I do. The highlight of my career, I'd probably say it came in the spring of 2014, for sure. I was battling a case of pink eye, I had the sniffles and the flu all at one time. I drew a matchup against Bennington Wellingham. He was the previous world champ. But the matchup was actually pretty easy. I think it was after 129 minutes and 13 seconds. He blinked and I kept going. And I think after that I pretty much solidified my spot in the Hall of Fame. I then became known for two things, complete annihilation of my opponents and my infamous celebratory cross chop. And then it happened. I can't believe it's been a year. I mean, April 4th, 2016 seems like yesterday. That day changed my life forever. I'll never forget that day when I heard the news about Greg. When I was younger, Greg Basswell was my role model. I had always tried to shape my life just to be like his. Now, after the blinking incident, I don't know who, who I should ever look up to anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I remember that day we got pulled out of class. We had a school at assembly. <sighs> In a moment of silence for what happened to Greg. It's okay, he'll be fine. I can't do this. Jeez. Uh, hearing the news about Greg was awful. Uh, just awful. And me and my buddies, we went to the bar after we were fishing and uh, it was on the TV and, and we thought it was fake. Yes. Breaking news coming into our newsroom. It is with great sadness that I must report 47-time International Staring Contest champion Greg Baswell has blinked. In fact, Mr. Baswell has blinked twice in the past 10 seconds. It was just awful. It was like I got punched in the gut. And I don't like getting punched in the gut. Uh, just, just so sad. circus. He'd have a hard time separating his work life from his social life. Like when we'd go to the mall, people would say, hey, take a picture. It'll last longer. And that hurt me. I felt like a loser around Greg. And whenever we'd work out and he'd spot me, he would just scare the shit out of me. I was just tired of being around someone so weird. Was I jealous? No, never. I mean, he's so weird. All right, maybe a little bit. You know what, fine, whatever. I was jealous of him. I am the unfortunate referee that was asked to officiate Greg's first match after his incident. 
and I disqualified him two seconds into his first staring contest. I, I swear, I saw him blink. The fans hated me, they booed at me, some threw rocks. I've received hundreds of death threats. So the government had to change my name and they put me in protective custody. My life has been ruined ever since that moment. I haven't taken off these glasses in a year since the accident happened. I can't bear looking at myself in the mirror because, because I'm just a freak who blinks too much. But I'll try it. I'll give it a try, but I can't, I can't promise. Okay. I can't, I can't do it. Some of Greg's friends and I notice there's something wrong with him. We had an intervention with them, and we knew we needed to get him back to where he was. And we decided that he needed to go see a doctor and get the treatment he needed. Greg came in to see me a couple of weeks ago um, to get checked out. Um, he's perfectly healthy, has no complications. Uh, we took an x-ray. And as you can see from the film, there's a black dot right where his eye is. Um, in my professional opinion, I think when Nick blew out the candle, it blew a bug into Greg's eye, and it's been lodged there ever since. His friends find this absolutely hilarious. Uh, told me never to tell him, but um, my lips are sealed. I'll never forgive Nick for what he did to me. I was on top of the world. Now I'm just on the bottom floor. I'm in the basement of life. It, it's true what they say that you never know what you got till it's gone, but I think the true message to take away from my tragic story is that you need to be careful what you wish for. <laughs>